Frankly, boy, I'm wavy. I ain't talking about no ocean. Ain't had no pot to piss in, boy. I came up. What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy CY, and we're back. This is the first video that I have put out since Madden 17. Yes, I know you guys may have been wondering where I've been at or what I've been doing. I know I said I was going to have a day one scheme by Madden 18, but to be quite honest with you, I just wasn't feeling that confident with my game yet. So now I am. I've been doing pretty well. I've been uh, ranking up in Mud Draft. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you guys the scheme that I've been working on that helps me win these games and this is a scheme that is in uh eight different playbooks right now i'm out of the buffalo bills um and it's gonna be a scheme i'm not too sure you've seen before it's gonna be out of the gun spread um formation and before i get started be sure to drop a like subscribe to the channel you guys already know what it is you know how we're always out here once i start getting on the grind i stay on the grind so we're going to have some more videos. This is most likely going to be a two-part series for the scheme because i got a lot of stuff to cover. So let's jump right in. All right. So this is a four wide receiver set. So in Mutt Draft, Mutt, anything like that, you're going to want to make sure you have four good receivers for this set. And it's a one running back set. So play we're going to come out in. Well, just for ex just to start, we'll just start going over them all. So the half pack draw. This is your bread. We're gonna put on our bread and butter. We're gonna put them in a cover four drop show too. And I have ran this so many times. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna run the HB draw as your main run. So it's gonna look something like this. And you're gonna always get it up the middle like that. Yada yada yada. This is good, this is good, go whatever. This run, no matter what. Um, if your opponent crashes or anything like that is okay better yet if your opponent starts crashing down to the middle with like their d-line we're going to switch up the run i'm going to show you that in a bit but basically if your opponent does anything besides crashing the d-line down and blitzing the middle linebackers both of them they're going to have a hard time stopping this so if they do those though all you're going to do is auto one the inside zone here and if they're crashing, you're going to be able to take that down like that. But it's going to be a lot more wide open. This I can't stress it enough, though. This HP draw is your bread and butter. And the reason why I say that the HP draw is so good out of this formation is because this is what it's supposed to be. You are spreading the defense out and holding them thin. And if the defense baselines, guess what? It still doesn't stop it if unless they baseline and blitz. Now, so if those let's say those linebackers over here, to the left over there by Holmes comes in, you're still going to be able to run this. Run this as your play to pick up your guaranteed yards until they have to commit to stopping it. And then when they think they finally got you shut down by crashing in the middle, you can take this run and bust it outside. That's what this HB inside zone is actually for. I know the name doesn't make so much sense because it's inside zone, but whatever. You guys know how it works. Okay, that's what that's going to be. And like I said, the reason this works so well is because you have the defense spread out in a passing formation with four wide receiver set. This it makes their brain like think automatically that you're passing it. So the draw to this is especially effective. And when you see a lot of cover four drop show two, the draw is actually that defense's weakness. So this plays really well into what the mate is. I already covered inside um zone, but I'm also gonna talk about how this is a hat or this is your audible. So make it a habit when they start blitzing those uh Middle linebackers, just keep this out there just to make sure that you like they know they're aware of it so they don't blitz them as much. Now let's jump into the passing plays. So the first passing play that I am going to cover um, is going to be curl flats. And this is basically a play that is just completely underused by the community. This is a play that does not get called enough. I mean, I'm glad people don't call it because it is very effective and I would hate sitting here having to try to stop it 24-7. But at the same point, it's not used enough. So this play is basically a high-low between the flats and the curls. And you guys pretty much know how this works. And it works especially well when their opponent is playing hard flats. Instead of having that um, angle route right there, I'm going to put them in a curl, which is better. So, for example, if your opponent's playing hard flats, that's what you're going to do. That's on Chris Harris, so you see how it reacts. This is versus the cover four. I'll cover it versus a couple more coverages just to show you. Blah, blah, blah. Yep, looks like a tight throw. It's not. You're going to get that ball there all game long. 
if your opponent's playing in the hard flats. You throw it, oh, that was a terrible throw, my bad. You throw it like as soon as he turns around and breaks. So it's kind of a timing route. You just got to get used to it. And what's better about this play is in, than making just a normal curl is the fact that like if you make a n normal curl here, he's not going to get out into space, which, yeah, that's, that's good, and it still gets the same yards. But after the catch, you have more of a chance when your um, receiver is finding a little soft zone in those zones and it's or soft spot in the zones, and it makes it less susceptible for a pick. So this is just a great play. Uh, I'll run over a couple different coverages real quick. Actually, what I'm going to do just to show you guys just come out here on the gun spread, curl flat, blah, blah, blah. We're going to run it versus uh, just, let's just say they're playing nickel 335. Do we got it? No, we don't. Say they're playing big dime 236. We're going to run a random big dime 236, which I don't know why a lot of YouTubers don't do this. Um, one thing that really frustrates me, see when they do that, you're just going to hit the flat. One thing that really frustrates me about YouTubers is when they make their videos, they do random play in all the formations, which just simply doesn't, oh, a terrible throw does not make sense to me like you can choose a formation that would be good to go that someone's likely going to run against you in a game and do random play out of that it's almost like they're trying to falsify what they actually do as you can see we're running this versus random play though and oh that was a terrible read i was going to say we're just making our reads but i'm really not i'm out here making bad reads all right anyways so you're just going to watch that corner or whoever's in there see and as you can see, it's pretty much money. I'm not going to go into any much more. Pretty much one more play. It's hopefully they're in man, so I can show you how this does. Yep, they were in man there. If you waited a little bit longer, he would have been open. You guys get the gist. Yada, yada, yada. All right, next play we're going to do is double slants. And this is a play you're going to do if you just can't really seem to beat cover four. And it is in the audibles, but I'm going to go ahead and pick it so I don't have to keep audibling to it. So if your opponent just is, seems to be shutting you down with this cover four, I don't know how they could because there's a lot of stuff to beat it, including like that last play. <laughs> but what you're going to do is you're going to streak your B receiver, hit your A receiver, block the running back, and you're going to ID the mic. For those that don't know how to do that, you're going to press LB, A, and then you're going to come down, and you're, we're going to pick this guy right here. Um, another thing we can do, actually, is we're going to pick him because if we pick him or him, it's the same effect. But if he's blitzing in a Tampa 2 or something, we're better off picking him. So you're going to pick that outside linebacker. Um, let's see, actually, I don't know if it's going to work if he's not baseline, but we're going to do it anyways. So then what you're going to do is just, as you can see, they're going to crash down the outside of that end. So you're going to have the ability to roll out, and then you're going to hit that slant coming across. And versus cover four, this is especially deadly because they're only rushing three, so you're going to have time. Um, again, we're going to hitch A, streak B, block the running back, and ID the, oops, ID the mic down to him. You can do, um, you can do this guy or this guy, but this guy, I do this guy just because in Tampa 2, sometimes he's blitzing. Better be safe than sorry. Same effect. Anyways, what this is going to do is going to cause your offense line to crash down on him. Wait a second. Give it a minute. He's going to get blocked extra good. Boom. You hit that, and easy way to spread it out. Um, this is also a play that you can use just, you know, in general, which I'm going to show you how um, for examples here. Something you can do is you can come out here and we can go into gun spread. And I know this video is going to be a little bit longer. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make sure that it's broken down well enough for people and even those beginners that they fully understand everything you can do with this offense. They don't come out and just say, yo, Cy, this, su this shit sucks, bro. This, this shit's shit terrible. Um, see why you, you got the whack shit. No, no, I do not. I'm just... Going to give you guys some more wrinkles you can throw. So what I like to do here is streak a Y receiver most of the time. And this is a common like concept. All it does is depending on their zone, which doesn't work for everything, obviously. But depending on the zone, it's going to pull the zone back. Um, and when it pulls that zone back, you're going to have X underneath. This is a little bit of a different play, though, considering they're in like quarters formation. And if they were in this formation, or dot dime formation, if they were in this formation in the real game, I'd most likely just pound the rock. But anyways... Some things you can do with the slants also is you could go something like this. And it's going to really just create a bunch of confusion over on that side and give you some space. But whatever. All right. Next play I'm going to talk about is another one of your audibles. Um, I'm not going to run it too many times, though, because it is a play that everybody pretty much knows. And it would be senseless for me to sit here and spend a long time covering it so I'll just come in do random big dime whatever so 
that's four verticals. Yeah, you're going to say, oh, duh, cheese or whatever. No, this is a good play. Everybody knows it's a good play. It's a good situational play. It's not a play I'd come out here and run every down. I would come out here and run this when I absolutely need to or when my opponent's least expecting it. Of course, I'm just not playing great right now, and they were blitzing me. That's another thing. Do not run this play if they're blitzing you. Have some common football knowledge, guys. This is a deep throw and play. So if they're running cover four, don't run four verticals. That's literally playing into what their defense is. They're, they're playing for the four deep routes. Come on now. If they're in a cover two or something, that's different. Or if they're in man, you have this uh, little, you have that little, whatever you want to call it, wing route. I don't know what the fuck it's called. On the, from the running back. And most of the time, you can also beat him inside. Especially, that's another thing I should say. So they're sitting in 3-4. This is a play you'd want to call. They're running man in 3-4. Your opponent's just dumb or they're running anything in 3-4. Because they're not personnel matching you. And these are obviously in big dime, but so you're going to be able to hit those um, inside receivers because those are receivers, not tight ends. Remember, this is a four wide receiver set. You're going to be able to beat those receivers or those linebackers on the inside. Right, that's that for that play. Um, let's see how long we've been running this video for. Oh, yeah. We, could, we should probably go two parts, but I'm just going to cover the rest of it. Fuck it. So, next play you're going to be running is... No, no, I'm not covering the rest of it. I'll cover the rest of it in the next video. This video is going to take too long to render, guys. I'm sorry. So it's your boy CY. You guys can catch the rest of the scheme in part two. Again, gun spread out of the Buffalo Bills playbook. I hope so far it's helped you. Just look for the next video to get the complete scheme.